Introducing the official Monkey Works coffee in three bold flavors. Fog Navigator, the master of mornings, chocolate and apricot. Texas Pecan, Lone Star Luxury, Pecan and Cocoa. House Decaf, full flavor, no buzz, smoky dark chocolate. Three bold new flavors now available at monkeyworksus.com forward slash shop or scan the QR code on screen now. All right. Hey, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It's going to be your sit rep. It is 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you live from the Monkey Lounge in the great state of Texas. And so without further ado, we're going to jump over here to Skyglass, but uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover today. We're going to talk about the Trump indictment number four. Uh, the witch hunt continues, and, uh, and then we're going to get into what's going on in Ukraine. We're going to talk a little bit about some stuff that's happening at our border, as well as the good old flashbang himself. And uh, as always, we're going to look at the skies. We're going to see where the intel community is actually focusing their concentration at the moment and uh, what is going on around the world. So let's go on and get into it. Uh, let's see here. Jump over to our mini board. And we are sitting at around 238 mil aircraft up. Remember, this is about 10% of what really is up. We can't see all the fighters, et cetera. But what we can do is let's peel that onion a little bit. Let's go over and take a look at how many air refuelers we have up currently around the United States and, uh, and elsewhere over into Europe. So we got the B767-200 Pegasus. We've got the KC-135 tankers. We're going to hit those traces. Remember, those traces show every five seconds over the last course of the flight of that uh, particular aircraft, Okay. Okay, minimize that. <clears throat> we got quite a few up, 34. Now, remember, we uh, look at these because it's a good indicator that uh, there are a lot of fighters up. Because remember, fighters are like little Formula One uh, racing cars, right? They basically have to get fuel on a pretty regular basis. So when you have air refuelers up, that's basically keeping those little race cars flying, so to speak. Okay. All right. Over uh, California, we've only got one up there. Notice a bunch coming out uh, here in the center of the United States, as always, down to our southern border over Texas. And then, uh, which, uh, again, is an indicator we've got fighters up along our southern border, which is an interesting dynamic. Florida is chock full. We've got some stuff out over the Atlantic East Coast, uh, refueler-wise. Up the East Coast, as always, D.C., always covered up. And then off of the Northeast Seaboard or the Northeastern Seaboard. So, all right, let's do this. Let's jump over to Europe and see if we've got any indication. Yeah, all we're seeing is stuff out over the, the U.K., which is, uh, let me turn this off because it's, um, it's wanting to reload my data and making my screen choppy. So, yeah, looks like over the North Sea is going to be the only two air refuelers, which is an indicator we've got some fighter activity out over that general region. Also, uh, notice where we don't see them. We used to see them a lot, but uh, they have since disappeared on us. That's because they don't want to be seen, folks. Okay, and that is along uh, that border between Ukraine, Belarus, all the way down south. All right, they have gone dark on us, which is good. You, that's really what they should be doing. We shouldn't be able to track those flights over this general region because that is uh, potentially a hot area, okay? Okay, now let's do this. Let's get into our watch list. Uh, we'll start out here over the United States. Notice we've got the Intel balloons up. I'm going to peel back and take out the survey aircraft, and then let me minimize my list if I can get this thing to cooperate. My mouse is playing with me today. All right. Intel balloons, those bad dudes are up high altitude, 60, 70, 80,000 feet. Three of them that we can see, actually four, there's one higher. We just, it's not showing in my screen right now. Notice the NOAA bird down south, Southern California, all right? And then uh, we've got a handful of others. That's uh, PC-12 over Phoenix. That's going to be that uh, airplane that does a lot of man in the middle over that region. And then we have what looks to be Homeland Security, Noah Bird, their Navy P3 coming out of Caracas. And then we get up here, notice that is Trump, all right, 757. It's his aircraft. We'll highlight it here so you can see 
just verification. Talk more about him in just a minute. And then that's going to be your spec ops community coming back from uh, up there near Canada. We do have a Q4 drone. We'll look at that here in a second, too. We've got a couple of, couple of interesting things off the East Coast. R-135, and then that's a Russian bird. Uh, then this is going to be a NATO E3 Sentry coming out of Norway, it looks like. And then we've got our usual intelligence balloons. That's a PAT, Priority Air Transport Aircraft. And then some more drones. Everything else we're looking at are drones there. Okay. All right. And that's going to be a comms bird over a rock. We've talked about that one in the past. Super high-tech bird. Okay, let's get over to Intel Aircraft. Notice uh, southern Tucson, Arizona area, very active and busy. Then notice a lot of big transitions. So those are aircraft that are basically bouncing across the United States. Look like they're moving out uh, from where they were previously located. Nothing really to see on that aspect. This, this is just the same area. We're beating down the same path over, over the northern side there, looking at Belarus looking at the Baltic Sea side of the house. And then notice this one, too, coming out of Italy. And notice that back and forth kind of marshalling plan there, back and forth. See that? Um, that aircraft is to the north of Malta. Looks to be uh, gathering some intelligence there. And then, of course, we got it over Jordan, over Israel. That's where we've been watching that. The normal stuff over Turkey over Romania, Hungary, and then notice this one that comes in and out of that uh, Persian Gulf area, and then this, the continuous circle over Iraq, over that battlefield, or over U.S. operational forces there. Again, intelligence gathering. All right, and then this one over Pakistan. Notice it's headed up there towards Islamabad. All right, again, intelligence aircraft. All right, let's move on over to the survey side of the house. Not seeing anything down over Africa. All right, let's go to survey. All right, again, transitions. These are the guys we're well over, I think, about 16,000 survey flights currently around the world in, uh, since February. Notice that they're looking over the the D.C. area or the Washington area, right? Very, very detailed. They've gone back and gotten more and more looks. Again, survey flights, folks, are looking. It's a LIDAR. They are looking and painting basically 3D models of everything on the ground in those general areas. So very, very active, very, um, again, it's just they're doing the same stuff they've been doing over the same areas over and over. They're re-polishing the data, all right? Okay, let's get away from survey. Let's get over to Ruski side of the house, um, and uh, we'll get into where they're headed. Looks like this one headed down to the Caspian Sea and back up in and out of Moscow. Pretty active and busy in and out of those regions, and then, of course, up to St. Petersburg, really far north, and then off to the east, which is way, way out there. Just notice that is... Across China, across Japan, into uh, the one of the furthest east, eastern side of Russia, uh, just shy of the head north up there towards Alaska. And now the drones. So it's going to be Q4, Q9 drones over the same areas, Black Sea. Notice the broken traces. And then we get down low, low altitude drones over Turkey. Of course, we always are just kind of Gandering down towards Africa to see if we got anything going on down there. We'll keep our eye on that region. Not really seeing much there. And then let's pop over here to California. It's going to be our only spot, Southern Cal, over Los Angeles. And then up right there on that border looks to be the same kind of thing. So there is that. Now let's talk Noah for a minute. Since the storm moved out, notice these tracks. This is going to be your science folks. And just notice the, um, that, that back and forth pattern over Southern California. Notice the transitions in and out of Houston over to Florida. Looks like they're setting up shop in Florida right now. And then notice 
the traces that head down. Now, we just tracked the one that was down in Caracas. You can see the P3 that's out in that area. Same thing here. Getting a good look at the Caribbean because that's where most of the activity is going on right now. And then this one, just notice Massachusetts coming out of uh, New York, New Hampshire. Remember, this is NOAA, okay? And then weather modification. These are the guys. They don't try to hide it. These are private companies, WeatherMod LLC. Remember, we've got storm activity coming out of that uh, Texas border area, and um, that's why they're out there seeding right now to try and generate some, some rain, additional rain. And then the stuff up there in Idaho, it looked like Utah, that general region, and then the northeast. You can see. These are cloud seeding operations, all right? Now, we'll go over to Saudi Arabia, and I will show you proof that the seeding is working, all right? This is uh, near um, Medina, south of Medina, and just notice off to the right side of the Red Sea, okay? That's Weather Modification LLC at work. Now, let's go over to our mini board. Let's go take a look, and I will show you on the map. This is what we're just looking at. Notice the weather right here that um, you've got turbulence that is, uh, let me cancel, cancel that. Uh, but this is where they're doing the work right here. All right. And um, there's Mecca and Medina. And then this is the area that is showing that um, we have, uh, you know, weather modification in process. Okay. All right. Back over to the mini side of the house, and let's get in. This is the NASA. You can see where they're active today. These are airborne flights right here. Again, back and forth. 380 knots. Altitude looks like uh, 28,000 feet. Doing the back and forth. It would be real interesting to see if anybody has eyes on that particular area if your uh, sky is starting to cloud up on you. But that is in... Uh, 520 NA is the aircraft tail number, but this is day number two that they have uh, gone back and forth over the area. All right. And then we've got another one. Let me zoom in a little bit and see if I can catch this one. This is 809 NA. And you can see where they were flying to. All right. That's actually a U-2 aircraft. Now let's back it up. It looked like uh, down here in the Caribbean. You expect to see that. It's going to be that Navy P-3 we were just looking at a minute ago. All right. Now, let us uh, let me go back to our mini for a second. We're going to pull back up Skyglass. I want to go back over Conus. Got a couple aircraft we're going to look at. Take away the air refuelers. Let's grab the Q-4. By itself over here, we hit the traces. We can see what that is up to. Only got one E6, Navy E6, that's out in the same same general area. Um, remember, Navy E6 is going to be Takamo, take charge, move out. That is an airborne command center. Looks to be headed down the eastern seaboard. And this is score 90. Call sign, that is a Q4 drone at 19, or actually 22,000 feet right now. Uh, you can see the altitude deviations as we kind of go in a little closer. But that is basically over the D.C. metro area, gathering data on everybody. Now, the other one, too, I wanted to point out was a Navy E-3. And let's grab the traces because this one's doing some man in the middle right here. So it is currently over uh, South Carolina, and it is... I think 24 miles northwest of, um, well, it's hard to see here because uh, my screen is so small. Well, anyway, you get the idea. This is, uh, notice that tight round circle right here. Now it's going a little longer path, but it was a tight circle. When they do the round, perfect round circles, they are becoming the air, they're basically the tower. Um, in the sky. So it's uh, it's going to be your cell tower. Uh, your phones, if you're on that ground level down in South Carolina, are no longer talking to the cell towers on the ground. They start to talk to that one, thinking that is the cell tower. And what they do, in essence, is basically gather and grab all your data. All right. So the E3 Sentry has that capability. Didn't know that until an EC E3 Sentry pilot came 
forth and told me that uh, that is what they do. So, again, it uh, looks to be doing that, that man in the middle circle. So if you're in South Carolina right now, your phone is likely uh, getting grabbed. So it looks like uh, it starts with an M, but it's something corner South Carolina. Again, my screen, it's about this big on my screen. So I apologize. Bit of an eye chart for me. I failed miserably. Okay, now let's get into Flashbang, see what he is up to today. This is an interesting deal because it just says out-of-town pool call. So um, nothing else on a docket for today. It's the 23rd. He's headed somewhere, but it's undisclosed. So we'll keep our eye on that. We'll look at the TFRs. And um, I, I see a security TFR, TFR down here in Florida, but that's probably launch-related. Um it, uh, this is a small TFR box here, which that's an air show. So uh, we still got the big one over the senior living center. And, um, let me see, look at all that weather moving down, just almost direct shot, um, towards, uh, Pittsburgh and, and that area. All right. All right. Yeah. I don't see any other boxes that would indicate other than Reno still has a big box. Over that, VIP, what's the date on that? 22nd to the 26th. So I guess he's headed back to Reno. I guess he's on vacation, folks. All right. Which, by the way, um, if you have been keeping track, that is day number 365 of vacation for him since he has been in office. That's a year's worth of vacation time. Let that sink in. All right. Let's get into some of the news here. Uh New York Post actually posting open floodgates at Arizona border allow thousands of migrants to just walk right into the country. The interesting thing is they basically welded the gates open because of the monsoon flood waters. And uh, you can see if we get down here, you can see where they are basically welded open and these people just run it straight through. Now, it says um, that uh, it's also monsoon season. This is why they did it. Migration of the endangered species of antelope, but it also has led an average of 1,400 migrants from as far away as China casually walk into our country on a daily basis straight into Arizona. All right. Well, there you have it. Just gets better and better by the day here, doesn't it? All right. Main story, the witch hunt. Uh, keep in mind, they will not rest until he, he is headed to the gallows, folks. If you think he's going to be our candidate for the 2024 election, uh, it's going to take a miracle because uh, this is arrest number four. He's supposed to turn himself in tomorrow into the Fulton County Jail System where he basically has a $200,000 bond. And um, yeah, this is going to get really interesting, but just keep your eyes on it because this, again, is a witch hunt. They are basically grabbing anything and everything they can throw at him. The chances of him getting out of all four of these is pretty slim. All of them have a felony offense, and a couple of them are treason, which will basically head him to the gallows. And if you know what the gallows are, yeah, that has a rope at the top of it and a, uh, a door that basically swings open. We did the same thing to Saddam Hussein, and um, you may have remember seeing those videos back in the day. So... Anyway, this is what we are up against. This is your deep state at work, and you will see that uh, this will continue on. And uh, like I said, I'll be shocked if we get the 2024 election. If he is the candidate of choice right now, he is running away with it. This only makes him stronger, and uh, it looks like uh, every time this happens to him, his uh, approval rating goes up in the polls tremendously. So all they're doing is making this guy more and more popular. And um, like I said, if he gets in, it will be a miracle. And um, like yeah, they're going to do everything they can to stop it. So just, uh, you know, it's a data point for you. But sad world we live in. And uh, listen, if they can take out a sitting president, a.k.a. JFK, um, then don't think that it is beyond them to do that to this gentleman right here. All right. So uh, keep, the, keep him in your thoughts and prayers because uh, he's going to need them. All right. Let's move on. Okay. If you saw any of the fiasco going on there in Maui uh, with the government, a flashbang showing up out there. 
So we got 850 people are still missing. Uh, that number, like I said, the morgues are reporting around 480. Not officially, but that's the word we're hearing on the street locally, uh, that there are 480 people in the morgues. They are finding a lot of remains, um, and uh, 850 still missing. There is word that this is going to be upwards of 4,000 when it's all said and done. Now, one of the things I will point out in this picture, and uh, again, it's just a data point for you, but notice the dark blue vehicle here and the light blue vehicle here that sit within the remains of all of this chard. These two seem to be completely untouched. So, uh, again, it's a data point for you, but um, if you research that, you'll know what I'm talking about, okay? All right, let's move on to that. And, and as the data comes forward, we'll be talking more about the, the significance of the blue vehicles, okay? All right, Biden. Oh, sorry, did I say the B word out loud? I meant flashbang. Gets booed in Maui. Then makes matters worse by comparing the devastating blazes that have killed hundreds to nearly losing his Corvette in a fire. Yeah, you just can't make this stuff up, folks. This is what we're dealing with, utter incompetence. And um, yeah, if you think for a minute this guy is also going to be in the 2024 election, I will, I will bet uh, my life savings that he is, not, uh, he is not the candidate of choice that goes forward. All right. All right, let's get on over to our dollar. The de-dollarization is irreversible. This is Putin as he's telling the BRICS summit in a remote address. He did not show up there, of course, because he's got an arrest warrant for himself. And um, the nation of Africa said basically, hey, probably I say the country of Africa. They didn't want him there. So, uh, of course, you see Z is right in the mix of all of this, as well as other leaders within the region. But I think the days are numbered. We've got um, a lot of folks that are going to be getting off the dollar as it looks here. And so we'll continue to watch and see where this ends up taking us. But 41 nations have basically um, applied to become part of BRICS. And uh, if they change, that means oil will be paid for via this new dollar system. It's going to get everybody off the, the petrodollar, at least the big players, which will send our U.S. dollar into a plummet. Okay, let's get over to our NOTAMs. Again, this is uh, notice to air mission. This is letting pilots know, hey, these are areas that you want to avoid or not necessarily avoid, but just be um, aware that there are mill ops or mill exercises going on within those regions, as well as other things like weather modification, et cetera. Yellow and the orange coupled by red, that's gonna be turbulence on the screen. Um, these are danger boxes off the West Coast and then danger boxes off the East Coast. Again, it looks like Flashbang is out here in Reno. And um, let's see, anything catches my eye. I'm not seeing anything that out of the norm. Most of this has been there for the last couple of times we've, been, we've gotten together right in the sit reps. So it hasn't changed too much. So we'll just move on from that. But just give you a general idea, Europe is just chock full of, of uh, no TAMs. Now, keep in mind, too, no TAMs uh, are in Europe. That's kind of equivalent to a TFR. They don't have TFRs in Europe because that's a U.S. thing, okay, <clears throat> or a U.S. operations thing in terms of uh, any of the U.S. domain countries. So if you're out in Guam or you're in Puerto Rico, you'll get TFRs there, but um, uh, it's just U.S.-centric stuff. Okay, <clears throat> pay attention to this one. U.S. citizens urged to leave Belarus immediately. This is uh, just pay, you know, again, it's a data point for us, but pay attention to it because things are heating up in terms of the country. Notice that um, they're categorizing the company as a level four risk. That's a State Department. That's a highest security warning. Um, that has to do with anything from terrorist activities to just straight up you know, coups or anything for that matter, all right? So um, if you go to countries that have a level four risk, uh, you have a, a higher risk of kidnapping, uh, again, terrorist things happening, et cetera. But they're saying Belarus, U.S. citizens, why we would have anybody still there, I don't know. But um, embassy 
folks, whoever may be in Belarus, are basically being told uh, you need to get out because things are very unstable. Now, to add insult to injury in your Bahiko moments, uh, remember Bo- uh, Bahika is bend over, here it comes again, that's the acronym. Ukraine reacts to being given F-16s, they say this isn't enough. Yeah, what it's going to take is us coming in there and fighting the war for them, but you give them everything they need. The problem is they don't know how to use the stuff we're giving them, and therefore they're getting, um, you know, their hats handed to them, all right? But they're saying, uh, we're going to hear, now this is the interesting data point for you. Six are being delivered this year of the 19 planes committed by Copenhagen, but um, their uh, Ukrainians in a typical burst of optimism announced they were to get the nation's entire stock of aircraft, 42 F-16s. Uh, yeah, those are going to be lawn darts, just so you know. Um, you know, they want more guns, they want more money, they want everything except for um, soldiers on the ground, which is probably coming, U.S. boots, that is, because they're running out of assets. Their they're, uh, military force is getting smoked. Unfortunately for them, it's a 9-to-1 ratio. So for every one Russian that is being uh, killed in combat, nine Ukrainians have been killed. And it's really taken a toll on their recruiting numbers. So, again, just keep your eyes on this. But uh, just to add insult to injury, um, imagine if we just backed away and didn't give them anything. They would, they're, they're, everything would collapse over there. All right. Now, this is a situation report uh, by the drive, the war zone reporting. Spy agency takes credit for strikes on Russia air bases. It looks like they just took out a couple Tu-23M backfire bombers on one of the runways with a drone. Now, why is this important? Because as Ukraine continues to kind of go rogue and launch strikes on the interior of Russia, what they're trying to do is bait Russia to increase their attacks and pull NATO in to the effort. So just remember that. They're being baited. This is why they continue to do it, because that's Ukraine was denied access to NATO. And they know the only way that they're going to get anybody engaging in that war outside of themselves is to become part of NATO or to basically get Russia to ratchet up to the extent that uh, we have no other choice but to engage. Okay, let's move on from this. Let's get over to this side of it. We're going to look at the air bases. We're starting off in Biggs, Army Airfield. Wow, it's that green stuff on there. That'd be rain. Kind of strange. Remember, this is the area where we saw them actually doing the air mod- uh, the um, weather modification stuff as they tried to increase rain out in West Texas. Okay. So, looks like we've got an Atlas Air coming in from Houston. That is probably or about the time frame for the rotation in and out of Guantanamo Bay. So, maybe um, that's where that came from and as it comes back into this location. But, notice that same aircraft is leaving here headed to Frankfurt, Germany. And then we've got an Eastern Airlines headed up to Kansas City. And then let's see, a couple of Airbuses. So these are going to be more than likely, given the aircraft size, those are going to be uh, immigrant related. So it looks like we've got planes leaving headed to Cleveland, Ohio, and to Dayton, Ohio, out of that base location. Again, probably taking immigrants into the interior of the country. Uh, Let's see, over to Dover, a bunch of C-170, C-172 Cessnas. I'm um, not seeing anything. We do have an Atlas Air coming in from Chicago that's on the docket, but nothing scheduled as a departure. So we'll move on from Dover. Get over here to Ramstein, inbound from Doha, Middle East, Camber Flight 747-400, and Dragon 11. Don't know what that one is, but it is related to Paris. Interesting. Round trip in and out of uh, from Oslo coming inbound back to Paris. So there's a dignitary coming in. And again, this is Ramstein, Germany. And then we've got one 767-300 headed to Cairo and one headed to Kuwait City. Those are camber flights. Those are more than likely troops. 747 could be some equipment. Forward operating base in Poland. Remember, this is Ukraine over here. 
This is uh, the forward operating base RZE. Let me see. Last time we checked in, we didn't have a lot. Well, that's weird. Eastern Airlines getting in on the business, showing up there, coming from Krakow International, 767300. So it looks like Eastern Airlines is now getting in the mix. Let's go down. I don't see any. We've got a NATO bird coming in from Eindhoven. And anybody else? Nope. Nothing there. Falcon 22, that may be an F-16. It's in the region. I'm pretty rare. Don't see that too often. And it looks like the NATO bird's headed to Berlin from there. That Falcon's back and forth out of Warsaw, Poland. And I'm not seeing anything else on the board. So, um, okay, let's move on. A little slower there than it has been, but uh, it'll pick up. It kind of goes in waves. Looks like the 3,000 troops we've added have since made their way there. And um, we'll continue to watch it. All right, this is Constanta. So we've got uh, this one. Coming back through, we saw that one a couple of days ago, Duke 76, 77. That one's headed out or actually coming inbound from Wiesbaden. Brio 68, that's an Intel bird taking off in and out. All right. And uh, Duke looks like that one looks like these are round trips. These are going to be base commanders in the region. Hayes 31 that looks to be C-130, I believe. All right. Moving over to Camber Flights, three of them on the board. We got some N numbers associated with these here. Just notice, don't see that very often where they give us some N numbers, but notice the aircraft types. More than likely, these are troops being moved coming out of Cairo, Osan Air Base, and that is Crete. Okay. Let me back up. See the birds on the screen, but uh, these are the locations associated with that. Again, military flights, U.S. Transportation Command. All right, here are the British Air Force transports. Only a couple up right now. Let's go down to the lower board and see if we've got anything going on. Uh, coming out of uh, Shallons and uh, RF Waddington, RAF Waddington, that's in the UK. So that's where we are today. So let's move on. Nothing up showing from the NATO birds, although we did see them in and out of RZE Poland. So they look to be spending more time there. We don't see them too often in the Ford operating base. Omni Air, again, Manchester to Toronto. That's moving the Canadians back and forth. Rota to Biloxi, Mississippi. So coming out of Spain, headed to Biloxi. That's troops more than likely. All right. National Cargo, what kind of equipment? Uh, 747s. So these are big birds. Got your tail numbers associated with them. That's nice. Uh, Toulouse and Anchorage. Uh, so this one's headed in and out of... Well, that's interesting. That's China. Interesting. Huh. Don't see that very often. Very interesting. Headed into China from Anchorage. National Cargo. So what are they picking up inside China? I don't know. But that's an interesting data point for you. Maybe picking up some... Uh, that could be pharmaceutical run and non-military related, kind of like what we see with Atlas Air and those guys in and out of China. Okay, and then Western Global looks like we've got one coming out of Tokyo to Chicago. That's a long flight right there. Again, that's probably picking up equipment, bringing it this way, and then we'll see it head across to Europe from there. All right, let's talk about the immigrant machine. A lot of stuff on the border. A lot of stuff headed down to Central America, and you can see here quite a few. So Valley to Guatemala, Laredo down to uh, San Pedro Sula, and Phoenix, Alexandria. That's a 72-hour holding facility, so a couple prison runs it looks like. All right. Well, listen, folks, that's going to do it. We'll keep our eye on the Trump situation, but uh, we'll wrap up our sit rep for today. We'll see you guys uh, on Friday. Uh, for our live show there uh, with the members and um, everything else, you guys keep that powder dry, stay frosty because it is definitely only going to get crazy from here on out. That's it. Talk soon. God bless. Monkey out.
Thanks for watching, folks. Check out the latest gear and products over at monkeyworksus.com.